Ever stumbled upon a show that made you question the possibilities of technology and media? Well, get ready for a journey into a world that's sure to keep you hooked. This 80s TV series offers a mix of satire, sci-fi, and dystopian drama that's truly captivating. But what makes it so special? That's what we're here to uncover. It emerged as a groundbreaking show that not only entertained, but also challenged TV norms. With its unique storytelling and cutting-edge visual effects, it quickly gained a dedicated fan base. But what makes it timeless? That's something to think about as we delve into its universe. Now, before we go further, do you have a fond memory associated with this series? Maybe a moment that stayed with you long after the screen faded? Share your stories in the comments below. So, get ready for a journey into its universe. There's no telling what surprises await. Keep those comments coming, and let's keep the conversation alive. In the late 80s, a TV series emerged from an unexpected origin, starting as a commercial, and evolving into a show that, while not widely remembered, brought a fresh concept to the screen. Set in a future world struggling with the aftermath of disaster, it followed the journey of a reporter who stumbles upon a dangerous truth about the advertisements aired by his network. This narrative delved into themes of greed, censorship, and how media can manipulate society's views. The lead actor's dual role, portraying both the reporter and the AI entity that emerges from a computer mishap, showcased the series' innovative approach. Despite its forward-thinking themes, the show faced challenges in finding a broad audience. Nevertheless, its originality and relevant commentary on societal issues deserve recognition. In today's media landscape, a revival could potentially find success. For those seeking unconventional yet thought-provoking television, this series remains a compelling choice. In terms of where they filmed, it's not clear how much of the show was shot in the old MGM studio buildings, which later became the Sony Pictures studio lot. Some parts were filmed in a different old industrial area. The main character's look wasn't made with a computer. Instead, the actor wore special makeup, and they used blue screen technology to put him in the scenes. They made the character's little movements by repeating certain frames. The actor said wearing the makeup for a long time might have been tough if the show lasted longer. In the series, the name Max Hedrum was adopted when Edison Carter's memory was uploaded into a computer by Bryce Lynch while he was in a coma. The computer-generated personality chose this name after Carter encountered a parking garage exit gate labeled Max Hedrum M during a chase. On November 27th, a man wearing a Max Hedrum mask hijacked WGN Channel 9 in Chicago Hill. He infiltrated the station twice that night, interrupting a local news bulletin for 30 seconds and a repeat of Doctor Who for 90 seconds. During the interruptions, he delivered nonsensical monologues, made surreal references, and displayed bizarre behavior, but was never identified or traced. Matt Frewer's portrayal of Max in the series differs significantly from the original movie and show. Max is depicted as more high-pitched and manic, interacting with the cast and playing a crucial role in the plot, unlike the original version, which was more laid-back and solitary, often addressing the audience directly. In the 1987 TV series, along with Matt Frewer and William Morgan Shepard, Amanda Pays is one of only three actors to appear in both iterations of the show. Frewer, Pays, and Shepard were the only actors held over from the original UK version. After the show was initially cancelled in the second season, he made a final announcement, paraphrasing Winston Churchill, We will fight them on the streets of Dallas. We will fight them on the streets of Miami. Vice. And if the ratings book lasts for a thousand years, they will say this is his finest hour. Following Max Headroom's cancellation, Mr. Belvedere was selected as its replacement, initially planned to be short-lived. However, 88 episodes were added, extending its original cancellation date. David Hansen and Paul Owen, writers of the Max Headroom show, were brought from Britain to preserve Max's trademark dialogue style. In 1989, the X Channel 4 presented the series as a 14-episode season. To prevent confusion with Channel 4's original versions, the Warner Brothers TV Lorimer Telepictures version is sometimes dubbed The Adventures of Max Headroom. The UK pilot film, music videos format, and interview formats were part of Channel 4's original versions. The original makeup team, Coast to Coast, was hired by the producers to maintain Max's unique appearance throughout various projects, including the original Max Talking Headroom show, Coca-Cola adverts, and guest appearances on Wogan, Letterman, and Sesame Street. Despite having six different fiberglass suits designed for Max, only the signature black suit was utilized in the Max Headroom show, though the reason remains unknown. William Gibson, a fan of the show, wrote a script for an episode, but the series was canceled before it could be filmed. 
In the midst of production on an episode titled Families, written by Michael Cashalt, the series abruptly halted, leaving the episode forever incomplete. Additionally, four more episodes were confirmed to be in various stages of development Thera's tale, The Trial X-Mass, and Bring Me the Head of Network 23, also known as Nanosurgery. The futuristic graphics featured in the show were crafted using a cutting-edge computer for its time, the Commodore Amiga. Notably, the Max Headroom sign translates to maximum clearance in British terminology. In promotional shots for the show, images of Max on a monitor were taken from his 1986 radio rental advertising campaign in the UK. During the second season, makeup applications for the character became noticeably more angular, emphasizing the impression of a computer-generated entity. This same makeup style was also used in the original Talking Max Headroom show and as Max for President Coca-Cola adverts in late 1988. The open source video codec Thera is named after Amanda Pays' character from the series. In the TV series, all the computers at Network 23 were Commodore 128s, giving the show a cool mix of old and new. The writers left gaps in the scripts on purpose so that Matt Frewer could add his own style to the dialogue. Bryce, a key character, was young and energetic with a birth date placing the story in the early 2000s. They didn't directly say the years, but hinted at it. Max Headroom, another important character, was used sparingly but made a big impact. Each episode kept viewers hooked with its mix of characters, storytelling, and messages about society. It was a masterpiece. Amidst the urban chaos, a character stands out, wielding intellect and humor like sharp weapons in the corporate battlefield. His name is a nod to the pedestrian crossing sign, embodying the mysterious essence of corporate culture. With cunning and wit, this character shapes the destiny of a powerful corporation, challenging norms and expectations along the way. His dynamic with another key figure creates tension that drives the narrative forward, exploring the consequences of corporate power. Through his actions, viewers glimpse the surreal quirks of urban life and the absurdity of unchecked authority. This fusion of humor, social commentary, and drama elevates the viewing experience, showcasing the creativity embedded in the storyline. In a sad turn of events, something terrible happened to one of the actors on the show. He got into a really bad accident while riding a motorcycle, and now he can't move his legs. This made everyone on set really upset. The series was famous for its cool special effects. It showed a future where big companies have a lot of power over everyone. People all over the world loved how it mixed science fiction with talking about society. Even though it didn't last long, it left a big impression on TV. One character, Max Hedrum, played by Matt Frewer, became super famous. He had a stutter and looked like he was made by a computer. Max's funny jokes about TV and media made him a big deal in pop culture history. The people who made the show got ideas from lots of places like British TV and Japanese futuristic styles. This made the show look and feel different from other stuff on TV. Even though lots of people liked the show and critics thought it was great, it had trouble keeping viewers. Some folks didn't like how weird it was, so the ratings went up and down until the show got cancelled. But even though the show isn't on anymore, it still inspires new filmmakers and storytellers. People still talk about how it used cool tech and made us think about the future of media and technology. So, the 1987 TV series Max Headroom left a big impression on TV history with its cool ideas and stories. In an unexpected turn, one of the actors who portrayed a pivotal character in the series tragically passed away during its production. This loss deeply affected the cast and crew, casting a shadow over the set. The series delves into a dystopian future where television networks hold immense power, controlling both information and entertainment. Set in a world where corporations wield significant influence over society, it offers a chilling commentary on the potential consequences of media dominance. Max Headroom, a digital entity created from the mind of a journalist, serves as a symbol of the dangers of unchecked corporate power. With his charismatic personality and cutting-edge technology, he becomes a sensation on the network, blurring the lines between reality and fiction. The show's visual style is striking, featuring innovative computer-generated imagery that was groundbreaking for its time. This blend of live action and CGI elements helped to create a futuristic atmosphere that captivated audiences and set the series apart from others of its era. Despite its short run, the impact of Max Headroom resonates to this day, influencing future depictions of dystopian worlds and the role of media in society. Its exploration of themes such as corporate control, media manipulation, and the blurred boundaries between reality and illusion remains relevant in our increasingly digitized world. 
In a surprising twist, tragedy struck during the making of the series. A crew member, George Wilcox, sadly lost his life in an accident on set. His passing deeply affected everyone involved in the production. The series explored a future where powerful corporations controlled society through television, manipulating reality for profit and power. Max Headroom, a famous character known for his stuttering and glitchy behavior, represented the dangers of media manipulation and corporate greed. He served as a warning against letting technology dictate society's values. Throughout the show, it addressed issues like censorship, surveillance, and the loss of privacy rights. It urged viewers to think about the ethics of media manipulation and the consequences of giving up personal freedoms for convenience. Despite its short time on air, the 1987 TV series Max Headroom had a lasting effect on popular culture. Its thought-provoking themes and memorable characters continue to be relevant today, reminding us to stay alert against corporate power and media manipulation.